let us look at proposition number 100 of book 10 of Euclid's Elements. The proposition says the square on a minor straight line applied to a rational straight line produces as breadth a fourth petal. So here the proposition is saying is AB is a minor and CD is a rational straight line. Now if we apply the square on AB to CD, we will get a breadth CF which is going to be a fourth petal. So let's see how we can prove this. Now apply a parallelogram CE equal to AB square producing CF as breadth. Let BG be the NX to AB. Now we know that AB is a minor and BG is the NX to AB. Immediately we know that means AG and BG are straight lines incommensurable in square. AG square plus BG square is rational. 2 times AG by BG is medial. Now again we apply a parallelogram CH equal to AG square to CD producing CK as the breadth. And again, once more, apply a parallelogram KL equal to BG square to KH, which is equal to CD, producing KM as breadth. Now, that means CL, the complete rectangle, is equal to CH plus KL, which is equal to AG square plus BG square. We know AG square plus BG square is rational. That means CL is rational. And CL is applied to CD which is a rational. And CL is a rational. Which means CM is also rational. So we have CM is rational and commensurable in length with CL because they are both rational. Now CL is equal to AG square plus BG square and CE is equal to AB square. That means the remainder part of it that is FL is equal to 2 times AG by BG. Why? Because we know AG square plus BG square is equal to AB square plus 2 times AG by BG. Okay. So 2 times AG by BG is medial. Why? Because here it is given that 2 times AG by BG is medial. It is not given. It is a property of the minor with its NX. Since FL is medial, and it is applied to a rational straight line CD that means FM is rational and incommensurable in length with CD. Now AG square plus BG square is rational and 2 times AG by BG is medial that means AG square plus BG square is incommensurable with 2 times AG by BG. So that means CL is incommensurable with FL. Now we know CL is to FL, CL is to FL is equal to CM is to FM. So that means CM is incommensurable in length with FM. So CM and FM are rational and commensurable in square only. So therefore CM minus FM which is equal to CF is an epitome. Now AG and BG are incommensurable in square. AG square is incommensurable with BG square. That means CH is incommensurable with KL. And we know CH is to KL is equal to CM is to KM. So CM is incommensurable in length with KM. 
because CH is incommensurable with KN. Okay. Now we have this AG square is to AG by BG is equal to AG by BG is to BG square, which means CH is to NL is equal to NL is to KL. How did we get this? Because AG square is equal to CH, AG by BG is NL and BG square is KL and CH is to NL is equal to CK is to NM. Just try to map it to your uh, this diagram. CH is to NL is equal to CK is to NM and NL is to KL equal to NM is to KM which implies CK is to NM is equal to NM is to KM. So that means NM is a mean proportional between CK and KM. So that can be written as CK by KM is equal to NM square and NM square is equal to one fourth of the square on FM because N is the midpoint of FM. Now what do we have? We have CM and FM are two unequal straight lines. CK by KM equal to FM square by four deficient by a square is applied to CM and divides the CM into incommensurable parts CK and KM which means CM square is greater than FM square by KM square incommensurable in length with CM and CM is commensurable with CD set out. So we can say that CF which is nothing but CM minus FM is a fourth apertum. This is based on the definition of fourth apertum. And here CF satisfies all these conditions specified in the definition. So that is proposition number 100 of book 10 of Euclid's elements. Again, let me remind you, there is a link to a PDF book which describes all these propositions in detail. Please feel free to download it, refer to it. And if you think somebody else can also benefit from it, please do share. That's it for now. Bye.